So the first question I have is related to the time frame over which we can expect to see innovation-led responses emerge. So the background to this is that when there is a humanitarian crisis, we see that it goes pretty fast in um, on the ground for innovation to emerge. In our industry, financial services, what we've seen in the crisis so far is that first you could go to some kind of disaster recovery set up, you just try to keep things working. It seems we're still in the waiting zone, going from performing the same processes that we had before the crisis into now performing them from home. When does that thinking start to kick in? When does the management or the organisation start to realise that now we have to change or find a new way to adapt to this situation? Yeah, well, I, I'll, I'll give it the first go and maybe um, John has some, some thoughts as well. Um, what I've noticed is that there is a um, there is a sort of st- a stability period after the initial disruption. So, um, you know, of, often people say stress is a is a, a consequence of not accepting, you know, the current situation or the current reality. And you sort of see that ripple through organizations as well. There is a, a very a per- a period of very high stress as it adapts to um, a, a different paradigm. But there comes a point where there is an acceptable level of, um, let's say, operational resilience. So we're not fighting fires every every day anymore. Um, it may not be comfortable, but the, the the major bits of the business are working. And yes, there actually might be some profound discomfort in just operating in a different way, but we are we're, we're alive. You know, we we haven't um, we we haven't uh, uh, struggled to to keep operating. And it, it's at that point that different organisations, I think, tend to start questioning how long is this going to last? What do we need to kind of bake into the uh, the, the fiber of our organisation to make it make this a, a sustainable um, set of solutions? And I think the more adventurous organisations will see this as an opportunity for a for a rethink. Now, I'm not saying all organisations think that way. But I do see that some see disruption as an opportunity. Uh, it's, a, it's a very sort of glib, you know, phrase that you know, it's a great chance to innovate. It's a great chance to. You know, the reality is, it's a great. You've got to keep the keep the boat running for for a while. Um, but there are there are leadership that see that there is a chance. Mm to respond better than the rest of the market and there's a chance to change the dynamic of the customer relationship and i think um i'll take a slight sidestep here if we think about that initial phase of let's just make sure we adapt and we don't die and then the second phase of actually there seems to be some settling down we're still running we're still alive and although it's, it's, it's uncomfortable there's there's a point in that journey where you need to have the conversation with the customer as well, which is where are they in their in their journey? Are they in that first phase of just running around fighting fires, or have they also settled into some degree of meaningful um, uh, stability? And I think that that's the point where the more progressive organisations are starting to say, okay, what what orthodoxies have we started to question here? What's what's been um, something that we we feel we can learn from this, and how does that what was that? mean in terms of our market coming forward i think one of the big problems is is duration you know people don't know how long this change is going to last and, and therefore if it's a short sharp thing then people tend to just go they brace and then they go let's go back to normal but the longer it goes on the more likely we see that leaders start to start to question and say mm, maybe this is a good opportunity for a rethink john is there anything you want you want to add to that uh, yeah just a couple of things uh, and i think um if we think of the origins of this word crisis, this idea of a turning point, um, it can be an acute, sudden point of inflection, as we are now. This one came almost from nowhere, uh, although there was a little bit of early warning. Um, it could be also a quite slow build where the pressure builds up over time. It's a kind of chronic thing, but eventually you can't ignore it. Um, and I think one of for me, the most dramatic examples of that kind of um, uh, radical shift in, in terms of the way the world has worked is the origin of lean. 
by now lean is widely used right around the world in all sorts of public and private organizations. Uh, its origins go back to post-war Japan and the the very heavily resourced constrained society there. Um, industry had no materials, it never had many. Um, it had very little access to skilled labor. Uh, it was in deep trouble. It couldn't apply the approach to manufacturing that had uh, prevailed before. So it had to reinvent. And the origin of lean is essentially a process of this crisis driven experimentation, um, which led to very, very different and powerful approaches. What's interesting is the, the way that companies like Honda and Toyota took the lessons and said, well, how do we keep this pressure on, keep pushing ourselves to the edge? Uh, and this is my idea of a laboratory. Um, because if we can keep that on, we can keep moving the thing rather than moving to a post-crisis stability again. And, and I think this idea of, uh, which Colin's just alluded to, of constructing a sense of crisis to keep a forward momentum quite valuable. Um, in psychology, there's a lot of famous experiments about arousal. Um, if life is very comfortable, we don't change. Why would we? If life suddenly changes and we just don't know what to do, too much arousal too soon, we're kind of frozen in panic. There's a kind of sweet spot which is enough arousal to make us think about and begin to change our behavior. And it's how to find that, but ideally how to do that in a controlled way. And I think that's for me one of the lessons about this theme of I alluded to constructed crisis. How might the organization keep keep part of its thinking at the edge and saying, well, how about we just push this a little bit further? How about to uh, using this idea of a, a constructed crisis to help us keep uh, a freshness about what we do rather than assuming it's going to go back to the normal? Thank you, Bates. Stefan, does that help or do you, do you have any follow-up questions to that? No, great, thank you. Very good. 